paper on the back side of this piece to sew this by hand. Oh, that pop that was tucked under. And double check the back to make sure you have caught the lining all the way across the edge. I caught myself and I had a little opening, so I just turned it over and made the stitches a little higher and checked the back. And now it's fine. You don't need to undo it and redo it. Now for a linen piece that's going to go around the neck. Uh, because this is linen, you can check to make sure that this is nice and straight. And what you need to do is keep pulling the threads until the thread runs all the way down to the bottom. As you'll see here, this one does. Okay, I did the same thing to the other side. And I did this edge. Now I'll check this edge. Because I recut it because it was a little too long. So you keep pulling the threads, a little tricky sometimes, until it runs all the way down. Okay, that was pretty good. Now we're going to take the linen piece and we are going to turn and turn it twice. And I'm going to pin it all the way around and then I'm going to stitch it. You can do this when you're doing an altar cloth as well. When you make an altar cloth or a communion cloth, you take the linen and you always wash it first. You never put it in the dryer. You hang it up to dry because it will shrink a little bit when you get it um, from the store, wherever you buy it. And if you pull the threads, you make sure that the linen, when you press it time after time, that it's straight across your communion cloth or your altar cloth for the undercloth or whatever. Uh, the edges are a little tricky. It takes um, a little bit of practice. Not to worry. You'll get it pretty straight. Okay. I just kind of press it as I'm pinning it. And I'm going to do that all the way around. Okay. Then I'm going to, if you wish, find some trim. It's hard to find a very narrow trim. I had to go to a bridal store to find this. And um, I, when I have the edges trimmed, turned, I will attach this. You may attach it halfway up the sides, or you can go all the way around depending on what you want to do. And when it gets dirty, they'll take it off. You wash it by hand, or you can wash it in the washing machine. Just don't put it in the dryer. Hang it up to dry. And then when it's all done, you're going to attach it on the inside curve here. And when I'm done, I'll show you. If you're not used to working with linen, you could tuck the corners under. Put the needle through to the corner. Oh, make a knot. Oh, there's a knot. Hmm. Put it through to the corner. Grab fabric on top, underneath, and just overlap it. Maybe three stitches should hold the corner in place for you. And just knot it. And then now we're ready to stitch. Here we have the collar, which is done. I decided just to do it halfway. I turned the corners the same way we did on the chasuble. So the edges are both like this, coming out. 
It's a detail. You don't really have to do that if you don't want. Okay. Oh, I still have to do that stitch. Okay, but I can still show you this. Okay. We're going to fold it in half. Find the middle. The middle will be on the inside of the cross. Pin it here. And on the other side. Come down. Pin it here. folded this in half okay. so it fit over the edge of the stole all I'm going to do to attach it is make an X I'm going to come up here and go down come up over and go down and then make a knot. Okay. I usually make uh, one here, here. Here and here, here, here. Sometimes when the stole really has a, a really distinctive V, you'll have to take the fabric and you'll have to hold it like this and then tuck it under and then make uh, the X over here. But you'll know by the form of the neck whether you need to do that or not. And then we'll be done with the stove.